And my name's Eileen Hall. I've been teaching yoga for 32 years in Sydney now. And uh, still after 32 years, I regard myself as an absolute raw beginner. And why? Because the depth of yoga, there is no, there is no bottom to the end of the practice of yoga in so many areas. And I truly believe that if you are a teacher of yoga, focus on that alone. Don't go off and do massage courses. Don't go off and do um, Pilates teaching because yoga has everything that we need in the practice. And it's a lifetime, if not five lifetimes of practice. I truly believe that if we don't encourage this in the teacher training within Australia, then yoga is going to become incredibly diverse, watered down and half-baked. It, it has a great future, Ashtanga Yoga. Incredible growth, particularly for the youth. It's very difficult for older people to embrace Ashtanga Yoga. It's not impossible. Guruji once told me, Eileen, he said, there's only one type of person that can't practice this yoga. And I was like, hmm, which one's that, Guruji? lazy person so anyone can practice ashtanga yoga but it is particularly adaptable or particularly appealing to the youth ashtanga yoga can do great things for this world for this community and especially for the youth so that's where i'd like to see that my energies can be directed towards the younger people there are many people out there who can teach yoga. There are very few in Australia who can teach Ashtanga yoga correctly. Because it's a formulation, because it's a set sequence of postures, most people think if they can do the set sequence, they can teach the yoga. But you must understand the method. And that's where it doesn't happen until you've applied yourself for 10 or 15 years. Then you might be able to go out and teach. My name is Pixie Lillis and I've been teaching here at my Balmain Iyengar Yoga Studio since 1980, shortly after I came to Australia first. I'm currently President of the Iyengar Yoga Association of Australia. If we're talking about and look at the question of the future of yoga in Australia, I mean one of the things I would have to well, I would have to say that obviously it has developed and there's a great interest. And that's interesting, no matter what method of yoga you follow, that's interesting because it does seem that people are looking for something to change something in their lives. Practice is what it's all based on. And if you practice, things will come. People were quite hesitant, people were quite suspicious about yoga in the early days, you know, the religious connotations. And I think now people are seeing it more as a way of taking some responsibility for their own lives, doing something for themselves, becoming more, getting more in touch with their bodies, through their bodies, other aspects of themselves. And that I find is very heartening. It's, it's always been there, but it's just much wider. As far as Iyengar Yoga is concerned, I think we are at a, when I say a turning point, I mean we are at a point in which Mr. Iyengar is 91. We are coming to the end of his time and his direct persona influence there will be people in the future who will not have experienced him in person and I think that leaves us those of us who've been doing this for some time with a sense of I would say great sense of responsibility as to what are we doing what are we transmitting how can we do this in a way that will honor the tradition that we are representing I think I mean, I, I think Iyengi Yoga is in expansion. I think yoga in Australia in general is in expansion, but I think certainly Iyengi Yoga is. So as an association, we're growing. We have 600 odd members. We have about 300 teachers having started in 1986. So I can only see the future as being, being very strong. I think even though Mr Iyengar at a certain stage, you know, will not be physically present, I'm hoping that you know, that line I, I talked earlier about a sort of mentorship and I think that's been true for many of us continue to go back to Pune and that's set up quite a, a system for us I think of continuing on. Uh, there, is a, there is a very strong sense of lineage. Mr Iger once said that if you have really gained a lot personally from yoga it's almost 
like a moral responsibility to give something back. We fill ourselves up with yoga and then it's almost from that overflow that we want to transmit something of that experience back to the people that we teach. My name is Swami Kriyatma and I've been asked to speak about uh, my thoughts on the future of yoga in Australia. The things that distinguish our yoga in Australia at the moment I describe as the maturity of practice here and yoga here is becoming part of the lifestyle for many people. At times I think, and it's a bit like rainbow yoga, we've taken something from here, something from there, put it together. We haven't road tested it but it feels worth trying. Now some of that, sometimes that succeeds and other times it doesn't. I see yoga progressively moving more and more into the mainstream. And the things that will bring it more and more into the mainstream is the validation of the practices through research. And we're seeing excellent and genuine research being conducted here in Australia and beyond today. I think we'll also find out what yoga is not good for. I think when one is enthused by what yoga has to offer, we tend to think that we'll, it, yoga will fix everything. It's certainly the case with Satyananda Yoga that research is one of our um, major priorities at the moment. I'm personally not so keen on the development of this area of yoga therapy where the expertise in the spe specific special need isn't sufficiently understood to provide that type of counsel. I think yoga therapy should be left to specialists who have special skills, doctors, psychiatrists, nutritionists. There's a certain amount of fear in the West around uh, its association with its, its Indian lineage. Some people seem to think of yoga as being Hindu or Buddhist or Jain or this or that. Yoga is yoga and it continues regardless of what ism is bolted onto it. The other place that yoga is developing is in the field of education. We're now seeing yoga being taught in schools. One of the things that's happened in Australia has been um, what I would call uh, um, a very positive step in the quality of teacher training available. It's interesting, one of the reasons for this uh, upwelling in the number of courses is the need for yoga teachers today to have some form of um, formal recognition. There was never in the past that need to become a formally recognized yoga teacher. For 4,000 years you haven't had to have a piece of paper to teach. That need has come, I think, from the demands of um, our culture. The demand in New South Wales is through litigation. Teachers are having to get uh, professional indemnity. I think it's obliged us to become of a higher standard and as a consequence we see people um, looking to gain training that has meaningful accreditation. I think this is one of the things that really distinguishes uh, Australia is the collaboration between the different teachers, the different organisations and the different traditions.